Hey everybody, it's Gil with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in last week's episode, we cut a lot more holes in the boat. We showed you how we were going to prep the surfaces to get ready to put new core and new fiberglass down. In this week's video, we found another part of the core that needed to be resolved. It was under the companionway. We're going to show you companionway construction, the way the rails are made, the way they're adhered to the boat, a little bit about how we took ours apart, and some additional core rot we decided to repair in a bulkhead. We hope you find this video interesting. If you do, please do us a favor, click on the subscribe button and that little bell icon, that way you'll get notified of any new content. Give it a thumbs up and share it with anybody you think might enjoy it from an entertainment perspective or on a project that they would enjoy. Also, if you're new to the channel, my wife and I do videos every single week. We talk a little bit about our lifestyle and live it aboard our sailboat. Oftentimes, if you live aboard your sailboat, you also do repairs on your sailboat. So there's been a lot of repairs, especially right now while we're in the middle of a refit. Thanks everybody, enjoy the video. Good day everybody, it's Tuesday, March the 13th, and despite the fact that it was 41 degrees this morning, it's warmed up nice, time to get rid of the fleece coat. I'm back over at the yard, and last night after I left, I just couldn't sleep last night. I kept thinking about that companionway, and where it looks like maybe there's some area for improvement where the rails actually mount down to the, uh, the coach house roof. I'd be remiss and I'd kind of kick myself if I didn't ensure that I took care of all the repairs while I was in here. Um, so I'm gonna go see if I can get that hatch off and take a look and see about replacing the core underneath that, if it's warranted. If I take it off and it's not warranted, well, great, then all I have to do is re-bed them and I'm you know, that much better off for doing so. So let's jump down on the boat and take a look and see if there's any way I can get these rails off of here. Um, I struggled with it a little bit last night um, when I tried it. Uh, I went online looking at how all these wooden boats were actually assembled. And there's a lot of different methodologies here from the side rails coming off to the forward or rear piece of the hatch coming off, letting you slide it right off uh, either direction. Uh, and in some cases it was actually removing the rails where they're bedded directly to the coach house. So I'm gonna take a look and see what we have in here. Come on aboard. All right, I'm working on how to get these uh, companionway rails off. What I want to show you is this is kind of what it looks like here. I'm going to slide this open just a little bit so you can get a sense for it. So I have my framework here. The framework goes up and there's a bronze slider here. Interestingly enough, the hatch has an opening here, there, and then I don't know if you can see it, there's a little leg that goes in underneath here. Um, I looked online and I saw the different ways these are typically mounted. One common way is this side rail right here, the whole length, can come off and that would allow you to lift it up and slide the entire thing to the side. Um, depending on the, the sort of shape of this particular opening, there's a lot of other options here as well. Some you remove this forward piece or the one on the back and you just slide it one way or the other and you just want to slide it right off. None of those seem to be working here. And as I look at this, I can see that there's there's a slight crack right here, so I want to be really careful I don't crack that rail. I'm going to epoxy and fix that. Um, this hatch actually works wonderfully. I do believe I probably should rebuild it. Um, a little bit of rot underneath this beautiful teak deck section over here in this edge. But for now, I just want to get this thing off, repair the core. Once I know how to take this off, I can repair that someday down the road. So what I'm going to attempt to do I'm going to slide this open all the way and I'm going to remove all these screws you see in this bronze runner right here and see if that allows me to um, lift this, uh, this piece up, slide it out, and that might be enough to lift the edge of this companionway hatch off. So let's give that a shot. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing these screws here and we'll see how well the camera follows along here using this gimbal. There's always one damn screw that wants to cause a problem. So I think the reality is I probably have one more screw. It's right here under the edge of this hatch, I believe. So I was able to get all the screws on this side down and all the screws on that side, but right underneath, I believe there's one still in there, I think. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can pull this off and see what happens. Ah, the screw's not in there. So <clears throat> can I show you what I'm doing here? What I'm doing is I remove these screws and I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this out. My thought is if I can get this piece out of here, I should be able to lift this side of the companion way up and therefore scoot it out of the way. Whew. That's not a lightweight piece of material right there. Well, by taking the one bronze rail off, I was able to lift one side, lift up the other, and actually pull this hatch off. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like over here. Um, so you can see the side 
It still has the bronze rail. And more importantly, we can see the side that no longer does. This is where that bronze rail was right here. Now I'm gonna have to see how the rest of this is constructed to figure out how I can even get underneath that rail. Obviously I wanna be really careful not to tear these rails up. I think they are just bedded to the top of the fiberglass coach house roof as opposed to all the way down through and fiberglassed up against it. But I'm gonna dig a little closer here without the camera and see. All right, I've removed all this decorative teak trim from right here on this rail. I'll kind of show you what this looks like here. So you can kind of see this is the companion way opening here. And what you're looking at is the actual framework of the structure inside of the boat. You can see this layer of plywood core, and then you can see the actual top frame that the companion way slides on. Now, bring your attention to this section here. Good, 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 good. I start to get soft. So this is that section where I said I'd kick myself if I didn't do this repair the right way. So the question becomes, what's the right way? I do believe I found it for sure. Well, you can see this here. There's a bung. There's a bung. A bung. So they run the entire length here of this particular rail. So I need to drill those bungs out pry this rail up off of here, and then I can replace that piece of the core in there. That'll get this thing nice and solid and avoid any problems I have down the road with this potentially giving in a little bit. So now I just went ahead and drilled um, a small pilot hole into each of the bungs. And I learned this trick recently. If you take just a regular screw, I like to use a drywall screw or something like that, and I just run it into the center pilot hole. You'll notice what happens is as you, it, as you push the screw down into the wood, the point of the screw essentially makes contact with the head of the screw below it, and it starts to lift the bung out. You kind of see that happening here, and then you just use a little uh, pick to pick out the remaining pieces. Let me go ahead and show a close-up here of this. So you'll notice I have the screw in, and as I rotate it, you can kind of see that bung just lifting right out. There's actually another bung right next to you. You've seen them both come out. All right, I am really struggling getting these out. <clears throat> I've tried popping all the bungs out, which I got out, but I couldn't get anything on the screw heads. It was like there was epoxy down in them or something. Uh, couldn't break any of those loose. I tried drilling the screw heads out. That didn't seem to work. Um, I am about to, about to try something a little more drastic. I'm going to try and cut between the fiberglass and this piece of trim here. And you know, there it's pretty easy, but up here where the core is good, I'm gonna be trying to reach the oscillating tool underneath there and see if I can cut it out. Um, the other thing I'm doing is, <laughs> as you see, I'm walking down the street. And the reason I'm walking down the street is because um, I went ahead and talked to Nick, the fabricator. He went ahead and ordered the parts over here at Sea Chest for our stanchion bases that are gonna mount on the bulwarks instead of going down through the deck. So I gotta go over here and get these paid for. More soon. Well, you know the saying, easy come, easy go. Just got back from Sea Chest, ordered 16 of these little things, stainless steel um, stanchion brackets. 51 bucks a piece, it was like 890 bucks for these things. All right, ordered and first step, well, second step to getting the new solid handrails are done. Stanchion base is ordered. Gave Nick five grand. That's a start. We'll see. That's Tuesday. The sun's going down. I didn't make a ton of progress on that companionway hatch, but the good news is I did get the hatch piece off, and now I just need to get that uh, rail off, and then I should be able to get to the rest of the core that we need to repair. Uh, at that point, it'll be time to start laying the new core in. Uh, while I didn't make a bunch of progress today, certainly this is a good step forward and at least identified the next step and the next part of the problem here. Uh, I'm going to go by and try and buy a, uh, a very good blade, a metal cutting blade for the oscillating tool. I think that's going to be my avenue to go in. Slide it underneath there, cut those bolts or screws, and then I will rebung it in a different place when I get done. As you might recall, this section of the companion winner right here is kind of what kicked my tail in. See if I can get the camera aimed down here. And what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to use my multi-tool with my new uh, blade from Dremel. It's a 3M Max. Supposedly it's really good at cutting hardened metal. So we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. 
That feels to me like it might have just cut through it. A um, little surprise. Let's give this a shot and see. You do a lot of work by yourself, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to save a few bucks, man. I've got a lot of work going on in the yard here. And man, you need help. I can help you up for three or four bucks. Huh? Kind of fun learning to do it too. I was actually really disappointed in this. I went ahead and shared this with the owner of the yard. Um, you know, I, I get people want to make a few bucks here or there, but the reality is, I felt like this was taking money from his own boss. Um, so I did share it, and I think it was the right thing to do. Well, I hate to admit it, but my battery died while I was in the middle of pulling that off. Uh, I was able to pull that rail off the deck. My God, it was hard to do. Um, I used those pry bars, and just like you saw in last week's video where I was removing the mizzen step, there was a lot of the same thing going on. I would pry it and wedge each individual uh, pry bar in, um, going from smallest or thinnest up to thickest, and finally broke it loose. It wasn't a matter of putting a lot of um, upward pressure because I didn't want to. I didn't want to snap that wood if I lifted it too high. It was really about stretching that adhesive, whatever that material was that was bedding that down. Man, that stuff was on there good. So it took quite a while, but with persistence, I was able to get that thing pulled off of there. Um, it was starting to get dark, but I went ahead and jumped down below and started cutting out um, a section of the bulkhead that had some rot. My thought was, if I'm going to replace it, it looks like it'll be easier to replace now while there's not a roof in place. And I can ro lower the piece of wood down uh, along um, the inside of the bulkhead where it needs to be scarfed in. And I could do that from through the top of the roof as opposed to trying to put it in from down below. So let me show you that footage. Uh, it was starting to get a little dark, so I hope this turns out okay. It's dark, so I'm not sure how well you're going to see this, but <clears throat> this is the section of the back bulkhead, and I went ahead and cut it further down, uh, as a matter of fact, all the way down to this step and the step below it. I got to finish cleaning out the got to finish cleaning out the material that's in this groove. So essentially, what this has is a I can get the view of this. You can kind of see there's a groove here, and the plywood will epoxy right down into that. So good night everybody, it's Wednesday night. I made a little bit of progress. Like I said, got the rail off and got some of this bulkhead cleaned up because I can come down below while it's dark. But uh, love and daylight savings time. We get a lot more work done on the boat each evening after work. Well, good Friday evening. I'm back down on the boat. It's windy as can be, so I popped down below. Uh, the tarp's going crazy. I'm afraid all you would hear is uh, the wrinkling of the tarp. Uh, but I came down below to do a little bit more cleaning on this bulkhead behind me where, it's, uh, where the bulkhead wall goes into the actual edge of the door frame. Uh, and I also bought some foam board. I'm going to start making some templates for what I need to cut when I get the marine grade plywood to cut all the uh, pieces of wood that I'll be scarfing into the bulkhead as well as the roof panels. More to come! Well, the boat is still a mess down below. Nothing's changed there. You can see the, the lower salon here still has the openings for where they're doing the work on the fuel lines. Everything's just completely opened up. And if I look into the galley, uh, same thing here as well. Uh, all the fuel lines have been removed and they are now being um, uh, measured and planned for the makeup of all the new fuel lines and fuel systems. So let me work my maze here without falling into the, uh, <laughs> the bilge since it's chest deep here. And we'll go up top and start making these templates. So I tried to show this uh, the other night when I was here, but it was getting dark. I don't know how well this came out. So what you can see here is this groove right here inside of this door frame. I can show that. You see that? There's a, a groove there. It kind of goes all the way down along this frame here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on getting all this rot out, which I've done for the most part. I need to get a little bit more out right in this area here. And uh, what I'm contemplating is, here, let me show you right here. This is where the two pieces of the frame come together. And you can see, right, if I can get the rest of this piece of bulkhead out down below, I can probably just pull this piece of frame right off and it will make it a little easier to, one, put the new uh, scarf piece of bulkhead in, and two, as you can imagine, this would be a lot easier to work on if it was sitting on a bench. So I'm going to see what it would take to do that. Specifically, I'm going to have to go down low and see how much more of the bulkhead I would have to remove to be able to pull that piece right out of there. It may absolutely be worth doing, though. So what do you do when you realize you came straight from work and you 
don't have your work pants on, you don't want to get messy? You work in your underpants. Your pirate underpants. I have to blur out this video now. Much easier to clear this part out of this molding. I was able to get this door frame right off of here, and I'll be able to scarf the bulkhead that way and all the way to the bottom. This worked a lot better than I, uh, I had hoped, actually. So essentially, what I'm doing is, you can kind of see here, I went ahead and just cut right down at the very base of the floor. So this is where the floor, the wall came right up, and there was a 45 degree angle right here for the edge of the door frame. And by removing it right here, it lets me essentially get that new scarf piece of, uh, of, dry, of uh, plywood right in there. I think what I'll do is I'll probably do a small uh, rabbit edge right on this and I'll do the same on the other one so this fits right in here nice and tight and bonds to one another good. That's going to be a good plan. So having this door frame removed is going to allow me to um, straighten it as well. I apparently when a repair was done once before the top curved part of the frame right up there, where it met up with the vertical piece, wasn't completely aligned, and now I'll be able to align those when I put that new piece in. So let me show you what I've done here. I have a template that I made out of uh, essentially foam board here, and you can see I've cut it at the angle that I need, um, but I want to show you something interesting. It's right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this piece of the bulkhead in two pieces. I'm going to do a lower piece that goes all the way down to the floor, and the reason I'm doing this, let me turn this around and show you. All right, I've got the template up out of the way. What you can see here is this horizontal beam. I talked about this before. It's part of what supports the, uh, the mizzen compression framework. And there's a section of it right in here that's a little bit rotted. Now, this right here is hard wood. I don't know if you can tell. That's hard wood. And while there's a little bit of it rotted right here, it's a small amount. The rest of the beam, the next inch or so of that, of that this way, is solid. I am soft right here in this core. You can kind of see this here. Right behind this edge of the staircase, so what I'm going to do is when I put this bottom piece in, it's going to go, you can see where it's going to go to, it's going to go right to here. So before I put the top piece in, my intent is to put that bottom piece in place, epoxy and seal it right to here, and then I am going to pour a thickened epoxy mixture into this sort of opening here. I want it to flow into this piece of the soft plywood here and that will ultimately create one thick mass right here. Then I'll be able to take this piece, put it right down into it, and then fare this entire piece over with epoxy pressed in all these joints. My thought is that that's gonna make this entire section, one, plastic coated, right? So no more uh, water intrusion. Even if I were to have a leak up there, it should avoid going in there. And ultimately it should strengthen this whole area up. And I think that's important because of this compression framework. And it's solid, like you can't see it move or anything. I, I, keep checking that there's another beam underneath here that um, attaches to the top of this bulkhead so it's got plenty of support but I just didn't like the way this looked right here so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this all with epoxy hey we hope you enjoyed this video the new formats a bit long form but we do think that it gives us an opportunity to dig a little deeper into the projects we're doing and hopefully you find it valuable if you did do us a favor click on the subscribe button and hit that little bell that way you get notified anytime we add new content and certainly share this with anybody you think might find it interesting, entertaining, or even helpful for the projects they have going on. I'd also like to introduce you to a couple of cool videos. This one right up here is a great little sailing trip we took with our grandkids where we sailed from Houston to New Orleans. And also we have another video right here we think you'll enjoy. Thanks everybody.